About a year ago, we were cleaning out our grandparents' house, and we stumbled upon this etiquette book by Emily Post. This book was released in 1950. It's quite outdated, but let's try to follow it. There's a whole section in the book about how to behave when you go out to eat. And we're gonna put it to the test. At Applebee's. We also got an updated etiquette book by Emily Post that has a more modern look on etiquette. So we're also gonna be following this. Do you think Applebee's would be dressy casual? Maybe business casual. I feel like there's a lot of business meetings that happen there. <laughs> <laughs> we're dressed for the occasion. Mm -hmm. Since I am the host in this dinner situation, I led Lucas out to the vehicle and opened the door for him. This wasn't mentioned in the book, but this is something that a good etiquette person would do. Thank you, host. <laughs> yeah, they do mention a lot in the book how if you're the host of a dinner out, like you better have everything planned. You better give your guests the night of their life. When you're the host, your primary job is to see your guests comfort and enjoyment. You have to do everything they say for that night. You're their mommy and daddy for the night. Making a reservation is generally a good idea, but it's a must when you're the host. When you call, it's also your opportunity to ask questions and make special requests such as a table in a quiet corner or on a patio. While we were driving there, I was a little bit nervous because I already missed out on a good etiquette thing to do. I didn't make a reservation. So I was hoping that this Applebee's wouldn't be too busy and we could get seated right away. So you actually already flopped so hard because like your one duty before the dinner was to make a reservation. You didn't do that. And then you invited me out to dinner as a guest and now i might be going out to dinner to a place where there aren't any spots i was scheduled out my whole night to go to this dinner and you don't have a reservation so it might be for nothing i don't even know if applebee does reservations all i'm saying is that i was pissed and that's why you need to follow etiquette we arrived at the Applebee's attached to a mall. This particular Applebee's is the place in our town where you go to be seen. <laughs> so I was excited that we were following etiquette. We weren't going to embarrass ourselves in public. Your first restaurant etiquette encounters are with the staff who get you from the parking lot to your table. Thank the valet parking attendant as he takes charge of your car. But this Applebee's doesn't have a valet. So I kind of acted as a valet, like I opened Lucas's door. Why wasn't there a valet though? Applebee's, step it up. Every Applebee's needs a valet. When you have checked your things and joined your husband or wife or friend, you wait just inside the door of the entrance until the head waiter or waitress comes towards you and shows you to a table. So we just wait here, right? Yeah, I think the Mado D is supposed to come. Honestly, these etiquette books are starting to confuse me. It seems like this doesn't work at Applebee's. Nobody came to greet us. So we had to walk up into another room and go to a hostess table, which if Emily Post knew about that, she would probably throw the t No, she actually wouldn't throw a table because that's bad etiquette, but she would leave politely. I think she would just be tensed and you would never know she's mad, but she'd be so uptight and angry, but she'd keep claiming she wasn't angry. That's the vibe people, these etiquette people give me. Passive aggressive vibes. Then find the person greeting patrons or standing behind the podium in the entryway, the Madam D. How do you say that? Ah, uh, Mater D, I think. I Mater think D. I know that from Vanderpump Rules. Host or hostess. So just another word for hostess. I think it's like more intense though. Like if they're actually using the word Mater D, I think it means something more. Greet the Mater D with a smile and say, hello. If you reserved a table, say, we have a reservation for the Molins. If not, then make your request. Request. We'd like a table for four, please, as an example. So since we didn't have a reservation, you're supposed to just ask the hostess if there's any availability. Tell them how many people are in your party. So that's what I did. Table for two. Some of the stuff in this book is pretty obvious. And when they ask how many people are there and you don't know what to say, maybe stay the F home. I know. Because you can't handle the world. You're a little bitch. Just kidding. Some people like, maybe some people don't know. And I love you guys. The maitre d' or hostess will show you to your table. If you're ushered to a table in a disappointing location, a heavily trafficked area, under an air conditioner vent, or close by the kitchen restrooms, it's perfectly okay to ask for a different one. Be calm and polite. Could we be seated a little further from the door, please? 
or we prefer a table with a little more light if one is free. The hostess brought us to a table and we didn't like it because we wanted a booth. And luckily the books covered this. If you remember correctly, they actually said you should call ahead when you make a reservation to tell them what type of table you want. So that's why we got the wrong table. But anyway, continue. But she said if you did, if they did see you at a table that you don't like, just politely ask for a new one. So that's what we did. And again, this is another obvious thing that Emily Post didn't need a guide in the book, but she did anyway because I guess a lot of people don't understand how to ask for what you want. And we got that table we wanted. That's a lesson for all you people out there. Sometimes life is gonna give you something that's not good enough for you. Ask for something better. Maybe they won't be able to do it, but at least you asked. You deserve it. You don't see the beauty in yourself. You're a human being in the world today, experiencing life. Be aware of that, please. It's a nice tradition for the men in the group to hold the chairs for the other women, especially in social, as opposed to business situations. I was a little disappointed that we sat at a booth, even though it's way more comfortable than sitting at chairs, because I wanted to do a little joke, holding a chair for Lucas and saying, yeah, I'm holding a chair for you because you've been acting like a female lately. Because it says the host is supposed to help all the females sit down. Yeah, I hope I wanted to make fun of you for being feminine, but it didn't work out. But I'll just say right now, you've been acting really feminine lately. Nuh-uh. <laughs> a gentleman leaves his hat and coat in the coat room or checks them at the entrance of the restaurant. So I was like, okay, I'm wearing a cute little hat. Jacob actually wouldn't let me wear a baseball cap, but um, I do wear a fancy hat for this. And I was like, okay, I'll put it in the hat room. Nobody told me where the hat room was. And I didn't know where the coat closet was. I didn't know where the check room was. So I was left very confused and mad. And I just had to keep my hat on the whole dinner. Why doesn't Applebee's have a hat and coat room? Have they not read Emily Post? If there is a host, he or she can take charge and ask the guests what they would like. When ordering a drink, try to stay somewhat in line of what everyone orders. In a free-spirited group, tequila shots may not rise an, an eyebrow, but such choices are a bad idea if everyone else is having iced tea. I don't really get what the point of this is, but I asked Lucas what he wanted to drink, so we're on the same page. I think what Emily Post is trying to say is that it's at some dinners, it's acceptable to get a shot of vodka, but at some dinners, if everyone else is ordering tea or lemonade, maybe you don't want to get a whiskey sour because you look like the little alcohol of the group. It's actually funny because people do this. People do this in real life. It's just like a natural thing. Like I feel like most likely people won't order an alcoholic drink if no one else at the table is. And we both wanted margaritas. So the the vibe for the night, I guess, was tequila. We were ready to get drunk, but in a classy etiquette way. I don't want YouTube to think that we're like promoting over drinking. We just wanted to get have fun. We don't want to get drunk. What? The first thing you do after being seated and settled is put your napkin at, in your lap. At some restaurants, the waiter or maid or D will do this for you, so go ahead and let them. You might be given a black napkin instead of the usual white one. I already do this most of the time because I'm a messy, sow belly hog. Put the napkin on your lap, and Lucas tried to put the napkin inside of his shirt, which was really embarrassing, so I said, put that on your lap. Emily Post, if she saw that this Applebee's just had paper napkins, she would be pissed. She's expecting those one made out of like this cloth, $15 each. I know, she didn't even mention paper napkins in her book. On entering the restaurant, turn off your cell phone or any other communication device. Of course, in the, in the new Emily Post books, they talk about cell phones. This is an etiquette rule that I'm just fully breaking. Like I'm filming everything with my phone, so. Uh, Which is probably considered rude. If they make another addition to these books, you know it's gonna say like, don't do a TikTok at the restaurant. You know what I mean? Bread and butter may be at the table as you arrive or brought soon after you're seated. I as you can see, there's two plates and a napkin. Um, and these are like the appetizer plates, but they, they don't give you any bread and butter at this place, so we don't even need to worry about that. Lack of consideration for those who in any capacity serve us, whether in restaurants or hotels or stores, is always an evidence of ill breeding, as well as inexcusable selfishness. Also, waiters are people too. I thought we were all aware of that. You, like, did people mm. think they were robots or something? I'm a little bit iffy on that one. Like, I can see both sides. Treating a server as a robot or servant is unforgivable, unforgivably rude. Respond with a hello when your server first greets you. And please, to your request, and speak in a friendly tone. Hello, waiter. Can we please have some boneless wings and, um, loaded fries? Can you make it fast as well? Yeah, bitch, make it quick. Gosh, speed it up in this shithole. This food better be good or I'm gonna write a bad Yelp review, assholes. <gasps> oh, crap. I forgot about the book. Just kidding, love you 
you so much. You're blessed. That's an example of good etiquette. He, Lucas did have bad etiquette, but then he turned it around and had good etiquette. Although what he said in the beginning probably did offend the waiter, at least he tried to retract that. I'm not saying the waiter wasn't offended, but I'm saying at least he tried. I'm proud of you for that. It's all about correcting your behavior as you go through your life because no one's perfect. Did you come up with that? Yeah. That's sweet. Actually, I actually wrote that like two years ago and I've been waiting to say it out loud. You guide your guests and set the tone. Since you are doing the inviting, you will be doing the paying. So make sure the invitation is clear. Since I'm the host, I made Lucas a whale. Like, order whatever you want, silly boy. Like, get, get, get what you want. When you're a guest, it's a nice thing to be treated to a meal out. Still, it's important not to presume on your host's hospitality or take advantage of his generosity. As a general rule, don't choose the most expensive dishes on the menu, even if your host says, please don't hesitate to order anything you want. But don't feel you have to order the cheapest items either. As the guest, I knew even though he said I could order whatever I wanted, I shouldn't take advantage of that. And I shouldn't get the Patron margarita. I just get the little shitty one. And you shouldn't take advantage of your host. But fast forward in the night, you started ordering Modelo, which I think is an expensive bill. So I actually was offended by that because it felt like you were taking advantage of the money that I was providing. But why did you tell me I could order whatever I wanted then? That's why I don't get about these etiquette books. Like, can't we just be direct and honest? I Give know. a budget if there's a budget. Ooh, the margaritas came, and the Emily Post book didn't mention this, but when the margaritas <laughs> arrive, squeeze your lime and your Gus lime. Which, to me, honestly, I know you just came up with this on the spot, but that's gross. Just because you're the host doesn't mean the guests want your little nasty fingers in their drink. Never complain about the food and service. Lucas broke one of the rules when we were drinking the margarita. You said, this is so sweet. It's gonna make me sick disrespectful to me, the host, because I picked this restaurant, put effort in. Like, that's just really rude of you. Yeah, I did mention don't complain about the food to respect your host and also just the restaurant in general. But what am I going to do, lie? Whenever possible, avoid placing, placing a used fork, knife, or spoon directly on the table. My psychic intuition was telling me that appetizers were about to arrive, so I separated both the plates, put the forks and knife on the side, but then Lucas said, no, you're supposed to not ever let the forks and knives touch the table, which I forgot that Emily Post said that, so I did put it back on the plate. Appetizers are eaten with the outermost small fork to the left of the dinner fork. Also, there was a lot of stress forming in my body because Emily Post said to use the small appetizer fork for the appetizers, but Applebee's only gave us one fork. Why didn't we get an appetizer fork? I was fucking pissed. Dinner conversation. As long as the conversation is lively and engaging, any meal will be a success, even if the food or service isn't up to par. But a superb meal and stellar service with desultory or depressing conversation can't end soon enough. What should the conversation be about? Just don't make it anything like depressing. Like don't talk about what you usually talk about. Usually when you talk about stuff, it, it does make me depressed. Um, Do you I follow mean, Allison Stoner on Instagram? What did she post? I, actually don't, actually I don't follow her, but I wanted to know if you did, because I wanted to know what she posted. I want to do a deep dive on her profile. No, I don't know what she posted, but I remember on TikTok I saw her, and uh, she posted, uh, she's like a wellness person. Like, she posted something about, like, something about just, like, being the butt of you, you know? Oh. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. You. No elbows? The no elbows on the table rule applies only when you're actually eating, not conversing. This is something that I'm really faulty of, actually. I, like, always have my elbows on the table when I'm eating. Emily Post or whatever was trying to control everyone so hard. I know, it's, it's like, like somebody wants to put their elbow on the table. Why are you labeling it as bad? I know, it's these people that want to have control over everyone. I know. Control freaks. Don't say the word freak. Oh, I forgot that's like a bad word now, right? Because people here are diagnosed know. with being freaks. That is? <laughs> I actually don't <laughs> think so. Freaks and geeks. <laughs> Pass any shared plates, such as antipasta around the table, holding each so the next person can solve himself. I would never do this, but Emily Post said to put the appetizers on your appetizer plate, which makes sense. Like, for some reason, and usually I'm too lazy to do this. I know, it seems kind of like a useless step to me. Never dip into communal condiments. Always spoon them onto your plate. So I brought the ranch to my appetizer plate and poured a little bit on. And Lucas accused me of taking more than half, which is obviously not true after reviewing this video footage. There's something about dipping in the communal 
Royal Ranch, that's so much more satisfying than dipping in a little puddle on your plate. And also, if you're going out to dinner with people, you should be comfortable enough that you can do all of this. I want to yeah. dip in the little black cup. I love seeing the ranch splurge out the edges of the oh bowl. God. That's it what it is. is. It's actually, it doesn't have anything to do with taste. It's just like my eyes get pleased I by know, seeing that like, sight. Seeing your wing get completely dunked. Too. Oh, yeah. You yeah. just can't do that when it's on the plate. Okay, these are a bunch of no-nos. Slouching, fidgeting, smocking, crunching, touching your face or hair, blowing your nose, chewing with your mouth open, talking with your mouth full, pushing away your plate when finished, picking or flossing your teeth. While eating the appetizer, we both realized we were both doing a no-no. We were both slouching, which is a big no-no to Emily Post. Sorry, Emily Post. For slouching. What if someone has a hunchback? That's true. So I mean, you wouldn't let them go to dinner? That's the thing is that I never really thought of slouching as rude, but I could understand it because it does ruin the vibe. So if yeah. someone's slouching, it's like, wake up. Yeah, it actually does bring down the energy. So I do think you shouldn't slouch at dinners if you can. Imagine you're at someone's wedding and you're like this eating. It like ruins the vibe than if you're like this. It's like, why did you even come here if you're so tired? Like take a nap before. But I still think slouching should be allowed. I'm actually siding with Emily Post on this. Women who make up at restaurant tables. Nowadays, they better be saying men and women because men can wear makeup too. I said it. Oh my gosh, you're like confident for saying that. <laughs> I know. I know people don't agree with it, but I'm going to say it. Cosmetics and food do not go together. It basically just says don't, don't do your makeup at the table. So do you want me to read that? Like, we also were thinking about while eating the appetizer how Emily Post missed a few things. She never once mentioned finger licking. She never once mentioned when you eat spaghetti, do you slop? Like, how are you supposed to eat pasta? Those are issues in society. Like, are you allowed to blow your nose into the... No, no, you aren't, you aren't allowed to do that. Oh, she does write about that? Yeah. Oh, okay, never mind. So you can use... Don't ever blow your nose in the napkin, but then it makes me think about where do you blow your nose? You should have to go to the restroom probably to do that. Dinner wine should complement the food, so it's best ordered after the menu choices have been made. The person ordering can choose a wine that goes best with a greater number of dishes. Are we gonna order wine? No. I was actually living my Emily Post etiquette fantasy, but then Jacob ruined it with a loaded fries. He didn't even bring them to his plate and he was just eating them like a little barbarian over there, using the communal sauces. <gasps> side note, we watched Barbarian after this. Enough said, we aren't gonna talk about anything else. Also side note, I didn't like the fries. <laughs> what I do need to say is why would I follow Emily Post etiquette while eating greasy bacon cheese and whatever the heck else is on these fries, loaded fries. Like at a certain point, I actually felt rude following the etiquette bo book. Like, I feel like I'm doing Emily Post legacy a disfavor by following her etiquette book while eating baked, while eating loaded fries. But you were okay doing it eating hot Cheeto boneless wings. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have I have this one? Cause like, it's obviously the best fight. Yeah, go ahead. I was allowed to have the best bite because I was the host. I did offer it to Lucas, so that was me having etiquette. Then place your used utensils on your bottle plate or whatever you can find for resting them. When we were done munching on the appetizer, we put the fork on the appetizer plate so we could use that fork later if they don't give us a fork with the main course. A closed menu is the signal that you're ready to order. If you keep browsing the menu after you've decided what you want, the server won't know you're ready. Did we follow this? Did we close our menus when we were ready to order? Oh yeah, I think we did. I think we always do that. Like that's like a, that's another just common sense one. If you aim to have a leisurely conversation during the meal, order food that can be eaten easily. Lobster or crab in the shell or unboned fish can make more demands on your time and concentration than you'd like. When I was picking out my main course, I did kind of consciously pick out something that would be easy to eat so we could continue our lively conversation. Yeah, we didn't order a lobster or like crab legs or something all complicated. That will take your mental capacity to eat. Thanks. I ordered mac and cheese with chicken strips, which you just put a noodle in your mouth and continue talking. And I got the bourbon shrimp and chicken with mashed potatoes. It's basically a TV dinner, so it was easy to eat. <laughs> <laughs> if significant time elapses between the arrival of dinners, the host should urge those who have been served to go ahead and eat. Luckily, our males arrived at the same time, so me as the host, I didn't have to tell Lucas, you can eat without me. I don't want your meal to get cold. I hate when that happens. 
Because, like, if you are one of the people who get your meal first, like, you're like, well, I do want to eat because it will get cold. But then when you're eating, you're just kind of in a bad mood because someone else is waiting for their food. So they're watching you eat so closely because they're so hungry. Well, if there's more than four people eating, I feel like there's no way they'd all arrive at the same time. Oh, uh, yeah. But, I mean, like, sometimes it's, like, ten minutes apart. It's like, that is not classy. Lucas kept shoveling food in his mouth and then trying to speak to me about Allison Stoner's Instagram. And it was just really disrespectful. So I tried to show him that when I was eating, I was actually covering my mouth and waited for my food to go down my esophagus till I could speak to him. About yeah. Alice and Stoner's Instagram. I do have to admit, though, reading this etiquette book kind of gives me a mild tinge of anxiety because I feel like I'm the type of person where I'm not always hyper aware of what I'm doing. Like, I feel like I could, I could be eating dinner with a new person and, like, the whole time I kind of am, like, eating with my mouth open and stuff. But I'm just not <laughs> really aware of it. Well, that'd be good because, like, if they're judging you for that, then... That's their own problem. But I could get how someone could be grossed out by that. Oh, if it actually was obnoxious, that's, like, gross. <laughs> <laughs> you want to taste one another's food. This applies to us. It's fine to offer or trade bites as long as it's handled unobtrusively. Pass your bread plate to your table mate so he's able to solve you a bite or two. Just don't hold a fork full of food to another dino's mouth. We did actually want to try each other's food. So don't worry, guys. We didn't just slop a fork across the table and gross everyone out. We put the food on an appetizer plate and gently passed. Usually we would just, okay, give me your fork. Let me... Maybe I'll put some. <laughs> yeah, if it was my dream, every time I ate out with people, I get to try everyone's food. Oh, that is yeah, love but they don't like get that. to try mine, though. So oh. I don't want my food to go to waste. But when one comes across the room to speak to one of the diners, the latter would then stand to shake hands. The visitor would then ask him, please, to be seated when he finishes what he has come to say. But if intending to say more than a few words, he might ask a waiter for a chair or probably make an appointment with the one he wishes to talk to it for a later time. We were ready to use this part of the etiquette. So we both scooted over. So we had, you know, part of our booth open in case somebody saw us from across the restaurant and wanted to chat. But um, unfortunately, nobody came up to our table to talk to us. In some upscale restaurants, finger bowls are brought to diners after the main course. Gently dip your fingers, one hand at a time, in the water, then wipe your fingers on your napkin. Sometimes a steamed hot towel is presented at the end of a meal or the, after the main course. Use the towel to wipe your hands and if necessary, the area around your mouth. Don't use it for a full wash up. I was kind of waiting for the waiter to bring finger bowls, hot towels, and otalo what's, talo what's, but he didn't bring those. So Applebee's doesn't do any of that, so we could have just skipped that whole section of the book. Well, I don't. At this point, we were like over an hour into the meal, so there wasn't really anything to talk about anymore. And I do wish Emily Post would have addressed this. She should have addressed the part of the dinner where there's nothing to talk about. Is it okay to sit in silence? Or should you start doing would you rathers or should you have a list of topics to bring out in a time like this? Do not get too rowdy. Few things irritate restaurant patrons more than a tipsy table that continuously erupts in a roar. Since there was nothing to talk about, since we already talked about everything, we started chugging our drinks. This is a big no-no in the etiquette world. It says don't make an ass out of yourself when you drink, basically. But we were on our third drink and the alcohol blood level was getting high. When you need to use the restroom, it isn't necessary to say where you're going. A simple excuse me please is sufficient. At other times, a brief explanation is fine. Leaving the table without a word is rude. <laughs> I was waiting for the moment of the night for my bladder to get full. Finally happened so I could use exactly what Emily Poe said. Excuse me, please. Excuse me, please. I didn't tell Lucas, I need to bleed my tallywacker like I usually would. I said, excuse me, please. If you're still eating, leave your fork and knife diagonally across the top edge of your plate or in an inverted V with the handles at four and eight o'clock. When you're finished, place the knife and fork together diagonally across the center of the plates with the handles at the 420 clock position. Unfortunately, we didn't do this because we were too tipsy, so we forgot, but we wanted to see if, like, the waiter would actually notice, like, oh, they have their forks and spoons like that, they're done. But now we may never know if it actually works. You'd like to take home leftovers. It's usually acceptable to ask for a to-go bag. Again, Emily posted a useless thing that I already knew, but I felt cool, like, I asked for a to-go bag, and, like, Emily Post approves of this. Dessert. At many... <laughs> What did you say? Read it. Sadly, we didn't get dessert, so there's no point of even covering this topic. Since you're the guest, 
don't try to take the check or pressure the host to let you pay. Jacob really was being rude in this part because Emily Post says the host who agreed to pay should pay and not make a big deal about it. But Jacob made it seem like I was ruining his life like saying, oh my God, this is such a big bill. And then I was like, wait, do you want me to pay? And you're like, no, I'm paying. But it's like, you were mad though. So it's like, why are you mad at me? But so I just wish you would have followed Emily Post in that moment. <laughs> It is impossible to give definite schedules for tipping because it all depends upon where you go and upon what you order and upon the service given. That is, if you patronize restaurants of greatest luxury and wear obviously expensive clothes with valuable accessories, or if you are critical and difficult to please, greater compensation is expected than if your appearance were simpler and your demands less exciting. Also, if we don't dress fancy and we aren't difficult, we don't gotta tip shit. In an average first class restaurant, a reasonably accurate rule is still a minimum tip of 25 cents for one person, 30 cents for two persons. I tipped more than Emily Post said to. Didn't she say? Tip 25 cents. <laughs> yeah, like um, in the old edition, she said that. So I, I tipped what you're supposed to tip, like 20 percent. Watch your volume as well. The other diners at the restaurant have their own conversations to attend to. At this point of the night, we did break the rule. We were on our second Modella, and we probably got too rowdy according to Emily Post. By yeah. too rowdy, I mean we were just talking loud about what were we talking about? Oh, we watched Emily the Criminal, and we were just saying, it's so cool how Aubrey Plaza is such a good actor. And we were just talking about that for 30 minutes and kind of talking loud, which I feel like Emily Post would think is kind of rowdy. And I did twerk in the splits and throw up under the table. But I just covered the throw up with a napkin. Thank your host twice, once at the end of the mail, and again, ideally, with a handwritten note the next day. Thank you. No problem, it's my pleasure. We dashed out and like a good host, I opened the door for Lucas. We jumped in and we're on our way home. Now it's a day later and in the Emily Post book, she said to say thank you at the restaurant and then send a note a day later and say, Thank you to the host, and I'm gonna give you time right now to say thank you to me. Thank you so much. Aww. No problem, anytime. <laughs> we did it, for the most part. We had etiquette at Applebee's. It made the whole experience way more classy. I bet we inspired three people at that Applebee's to be more like Emily Post. <laughs> well, um, I'm gonna end this video in an etiquette fashion. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye. See you next time.